Hello and welcome. Thank you so much today for joining me for this very mini express training. Now, this might be a short training, but it is the absolute step you first need to take in order to reach the goal we have set for ourselves here in this group. This is powerful stuff. So buckle up, get ready, because what I'm going to share with you today is going to shift your perspective and it's going to be the unlock that you need to take you from being somebody who sets a goal and just gives it their best shot that just tries to being someone that sets goals with a level of excitement and clarity and confidence that makes your success inevitable. Sound good? It is. Let's do it, friends. Let's get into it. So my name is Lena Moxon and my passion is helping people in understanding they are so powerful and everything that we want and everything that we desire and everything that we believe we are is within our reach And it comes down to how willing we are to unlock the gifts within ourselves. And that's what I'm going to help you with. I'm going to unlock the parts of you that you have kept repressed and suppressed and that are weighing heavy on you to give you the freedom to just set goals and reach new heights. It's exciting stuff. So... Today, we are talking about our running program. And I say time and time again, these beginner running programs are not for people who just enjoy running. And more often than not, I want to work specifically with the people that straight off the bat say, not interested in a running program, I'm not a runner. Now, I don't care that you don't really like running. And to be honest, I don't really love it either. But I care that you have placed a label and a limitation on yourself just like that. We heard it. When you say straight away, oh, I can't do that. That's not who I am. I'm not willing to try. Even though it doesn't seem like it has, you know, a big impact when we're talking about a running program, I bet that that same attitude and that limit you are placing on yourself, it appears in other areas of your life. And so if we can tap into the limiting beliefs you have and the old patterning that makes you a person that straight away just says, no, can't do that. If we can experience that and explore that and rewire you to be a person that is willing, capable, and confident to set goals, not based on what they think they know about themselves, but what they are willing to believe they are capable of, it has powerful impact in every area of your life. And that's why I am so passionate about getting every single person who walks through our doors at the training room to do at least one running program with us. This is our seventh round and there are people that keep coming back for more and more and I'm going to explain why that is. So let me first ask you to think of a goal that you have set for yourself in the past. It can be a weight loss goal, it could be a fitness goal, it could even be a finance goal, any goal that you have set in the past and then forgotten about or given up on or just not followed through. Why? What happened, friend? We're very quick to just forget our goals when we've given up on them, right? We don't really want to think about what happened. Let me fast track what usually happens and why people, you know, set goals and then don't follow through. We know the research shows that success in any goal we set actually is based on 80% psychology and 20% strategy. But for most people, when we set a goal, what do we do? We spend all our time and energy trying to find the right program, the right diet, the right advice, yeah? We spend all our time, resources, and energy making sure that we think we have the correct strategy to get us where we want to go. But friends, that's only 20% of the puzzle. The other 80% of that is what goes on within our minds and the stories we tell ourselves, what we believe we are capable of, and the limitations that we are going to have to fight in order to get to that next level of ourselves. That 80% is what I am passionate about holding people to and working through. Because so often people set a goal and they just want to get there. They just want to say, let me at it. Let me go. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. But they've never considered why they have set goals and failed in the past. And if we aren't willing to develop our level of self-awareness and we aren't willing to set ourselves up for success by working on what goes on within us, we are never truly going to have success of anything that we can create outside of ourselves. And that is why I have people coming back to these running programs again and again and again, not necessarily because they enjoy running, 
but because they appreciate that what I do is create a very safe, controlled container for you to come into and explore the depths of who you are, why you do things, what you think, how it makes you feel, and how that shows up in the results you produce in your life. It's juicy. It is awesome. So let's get into it. Today, the first step that I need you to walk through with me today is understanding and truly understanding the strength and the power of visualization. Now, I did not call this you know, mini training, come and learn about visualization because what you probably would have said is, yeah, 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 I get it. I get it. I have to think positively. I have to, you know, see myself doing it. I get it. I get it. No friend, you don't get it. You don't get it. Just because you understand something logically doesn't mean that you truly know it. Unless you have implemented wholeheartedly with consistency, you don't understand how important the how important the power of visualization actually is. So let me teach you so you understand, and then I'm going to tell you how we get started in this process. So the first thing, and I'm not going all sciencey, so don't worry. The first thing that I want you to just understand is that within our brains, we have something called the reticular activating system, the RAS. Yeah, it's a big word. Basically, what it means is that within our brains, we have a filter system. It's very high tech, very complicated. And what it does is, you know, just all these neural pathways, right, um, that allow certain information into our brain and blocks certain information out. That's what's going on within our RAS every day, yeah? Basically, it's like, you know, finding certain things that it wants to focus on and ignoring everything else. We couldn't possibly take in all the information, all the stimulus around us all at once. So the RAS decides what we are focusing on at any one time and filters everything else out. We have decided what comes in and what comes out, yeah? We have programmed our brains to look for certain things and focus on certain things and neglect other things. So it's been us who have programmed what's going on in there and also influence from people and experiences in our past, things we've been told, things we've internalized as beliefs. That is really important to note. So an example of this would be, and how it shows up, if you feel insecure, right? If you just know yourself to be insecure, your RES is going to go through the day, scanning your environment, looking at all your experiences and finding evidence For why, yes, you're right, you should be insecure and you'll find lots of reasons for it. Another example I have of how our RAS shows up is contrasting the honeymoon phase of a relationship and the, I called it, get me the hell out of here phase in a relationship. So I'm an oversharer, nice to meet you, just preempting what's about to come. In my first marriage, I clearly can see how my RAS worked for me and against me or the relationship, I should probably say. So how it works for the relationship and then against the relationship. So when I think about the beginning stages of the relationship, and I think anybody can relate to this, when you first start dating somebody and you believe that this is the right person for you, what happens? You find all these reasons why you are a perfect energetic match with this person and you'll find the most ridiculous, obscure things and make that evidence for why this person is your soulmate. Wow, you cut your toast in triangles. Me too. That means we're meant to be together. Wow, you like that song? Me too. That means we're meant to be together, right? We literally scan the environment and find any ridiculous reason for why that relationship is worthy of our time and our energy and our arias helps us find any reason. Cut to the end of a relationship. And I can very much contrast for me, at the beginning of the relationship with my ex-husband, I was head over heels in love with this person, could not get enough. By the end of that relationship, I detested the way that he breathed, poor man. He's a beautiful person. But what was happening was that my RAS, yeah, was fixated on all the things that were wrong with that relationship and all the reasons why I shouldn't be in this relationship and all the things that I wanted to see as being a mismatch between myself and my ex-husband. So my RAS just simply focused on all the things that were so aggravating and so annoying and such evidence for why I shouldn't be there. Same person. But my brain was interpreting it 
in a completely different way. That is what our RAS does. That is the power of our brain and our thoughts and what we consciously choose to focus on. It dictates the experience we have, the thoughts we have, how we feel, and then what we do. So why is this relevant to you? Why am I telling you stories about my ex-husband when you're here for a run program? It's very relevant. It is really relevant. If you are going to go through this program successfully, yeah, you need to embody the thoughts and the emotions that are going to help you to take action. Yeah, we want to take action that is in alignment with our goals. And more importantly, before we begin this program, we need to very consciously choose who we want to be in this program. Because in any goal that we set, who we choose to be in pursuit of our goals will actually be the number one determining factor as to whether we are able to manage and maintain the results we get, or even before that, get to the goal itself, who we decide to be, not the goal, not the strategy, who we consciously decide to be dictates how successful we are going to be in achieving that goal. So if you've come into this running program already and you're already telling yourself how awful and hard it's going to be and how much you're going to have to drag yourself through it and how you're going to suffer in every run, then friend, that is exactly what you are going to find here. Nothing more, nothing less. So can you see I'm holding space for you to consider what would you have to think? And how would you have to frame your thoughts to make you feel a certain way, to make this experience something that is going to compel you to continue? Now, if your goal is to feel fitter, if that's why you're here, and I think most people come into a running program, not because we're trying to be professional runners, but logically we understand if I consistently show up and I complete runs week to week for 10 weeks, it's going to make me fitter. And that will probably make me more confident within my body. Maybe you're trying to shift a little bit of weight. Maybe you're trying to just, you know, feel good within the way your body moves and not just focus on how you look, but what you can do, right? What you actually need to do before I even give you week one of the program is you need to start truly putting time and energy into visualizing your self-worth. Why? Well, let me explain. Close your eyes and think about what it's going to feel like to run seven kilometers. Think about it. How will you feel when you actually start a run and it is seven kilometers long and you keep going and you put one foot in front of the other and you finish it? You finally run seven kilometers. You feel great in the moment, but your life doesn't really change, does it? Truly, it won't. It won't. I've done countless half marathons and many, many, many marathons, far too many. <laughs> marathons all over the world. And I can tell you the moment you finish feels great, but that is not the biggest shift that you make. Those moments, those fleeting moments of glory is not what we should be chasing. And it's not why we should be starting a program like this. So let me reveal to you the real worth in a program like this, what you're really going to be able to discover if you really immerse yourself and go all in on this experience. This program has the capacity to really allow you to deepen your level of integrity, self-respect, and self-worth. This program gives you an opportunity to learn how to be a person that does the things that they say they are going to do, that can action their intentions. And when you become a person like that, it really does increase your level of self-worth. And so many people that I speak to, they have great ideas for who they could be or what they could do and what they could experience in this life, but they are just plagued with self-doubt and plagued with insecurity. And it holds them back from truly just going for it. There's who they are and who they know they can be. And our potential will haunt us if we just stay in the comfort of who we are, and often it's not comfortable at all living within the confines of our limitations. And we don't give ourselves permission to stretch and grow into who we know we are capable of being. That potential will haunt us. That is what keeps us up at night. That is what makes us unfulfilled, knowing that there is more to us and more to this life, but not knowing how to be that person that just goes for it. And quite literally, this running program can be that unlock for you. So let's start right here and right now. 
I want you to close your eyes and in your mind, have a specific picture of you and your life with improved self-worth. It's not how you believe you are today, not who you believe yourself to be today. Close your eyes and visualize yourself at that next level, maybe even your higher self. What does it look like? You tell me, I can't answer that question. And usually the answers are found in the things that we are, you know, hoping to do or the things that are actually holding us back. Yeah. What would increase self-worth create for you in your life? Would it mean that you finally could leave bad relationships? Would you start speaking up at work? Would you be more capable of defining boundaries within friendships? Would you start going to the gym and just taking care of yourself and investing the time and energy and effort that you honestly deserve? What are the things that you could do in your life if only your self-worth improved? What is it that you're missing right now? What is it that that increase of self-respect and integrity and self-worth would gift you? What is it that you want? That deep driving desire. What is it? Sit with it and visualize it. And we need to get that picture so crystal clear in our minds. And once we can see what it is, what it is that we are doing, I want you to feel into the emotion of that. When you can see yourself living with more self-worth and doing the things you know are meant for you, how does that feel to you? Sit into that emotion, feel into it. Are you happy? Are you proud? Are you grateful, excited, ambitious, peaceful? What is it to you? What is the feeling that is generated when you have more self-worth than you have ever experienced before? So you need to create the specific picture of that. And put the visual of what you are doing and really feel into the emotions of it so you can see it. See it for yourself. Oh, here I am. And it can be as simple as, well, here I am just enjoying shopping and just picking clothes off the rack and putting them on and not scrutinizing myself and just enjoying the way that the fabric feels on my skin and the way that I look and getting excited about where I am going to be buying this new outfit. There I am sharing my idea with my boss with confidence and making moves to go up the ladder within my industry, up where I belong. There I am. I'm doing it. There I am. Intimate with my partner. Completely open. Enjoying that intimacy and the juicy goodness of being present and connected and not held back by insecurities. There I am. Feel it. Whatever it is for you, whatever more self-worth would allow for you, see it and feel it. Now, the importance of visualization and the actual power of visualization is that our brains don't actually know the difference between what's real and what's imagined. Our brains don't know the difference between what's real and what's imagined. It's crazy, right? So if you visualize something and you really, you know, see it in your mind's eye and you feel into it and you allow your body to feel the emotions and breathe into it and be there, your brain will experience you visualizing it and it actually embeds it as a lived memory within you. And studies have shown and proven actually that visualizing your ability to perform a task will actually improve your ability to perform it without you even having to do it. So an example would be um, golfers when they're trying to improve their golf swing. Yeah. Part of their program, part of their training is visualization. They work with coaches to just simply visualize what they are doing. Crazy, right? And then it really does improve their golf swing. This is going to be relevant to you as you begin your running journey, because what you are going to do, right? Anytime that you feel that doubt, start to come in and tell you that you can't do this program, right? All you need to do is sit back and visualize yourself, putting your shoes on, getting out the door, putting your headphones on, listening to a song you like, and just putting one foot in front of the other. And you're going to see it in your mind's eye. You're going to see yourself fitter and more capable and stronger. You're going to feel the challenge in your body, but you're going to practice. You're going to visualize the emotion of uplifting yourself with positive affirmation. 
you're going to start visualizing that for yourself so that when you go for the runs, there's a part of your brain that goes, oh yeah, I know how to do this. We've done this many times before. Even if it's the first time you are going for a long run, we can use the RAS to our advantage. We can leverage it to feel, to visualize, to create experiences that are embedded into our lived memory without even having done the thing before. So if you are a person that is still unsure whether you can complete a running program and you say to me, I'm not a runner, I can't do that. So many people, when I say, would you like to do the 7K running program? Their instant response is, I can't do that. Well, of course, friends, that's why we're doing a 10-week program. You're not supposed to do it. If you could do it on day one, it makes the 10-week program pretty irrelevant, doesn't it? Of course. We use visualization as one of the tools in our toolkit to give us the confidence to just start, to just give it a go. Usually, when the goal seems overwhelming, what we don't understand is that if we just focus on the first little milestone, the goal doesn't seem so important anymore. We can just focus on the milestone, the one thing that we have to do and do that. And in a running program like this, the first session that you have to do is not going to be ultra challenging. The biggest challenge is going to be controlling what goes on within your mind and knowing that the RAS is going to focus on whatever you have decided is your main focus gives you power. You can leverage that and you can decide, right, I'm going to start visualizing myself as a runner. I'm going to visualize what it's going to feel like. I'm going to see it in my mind's eye that I'm just consistently moving and I'm going to feel how good it feels to, you know, have my heart race just that little bit faster and my body start to move in motion and my mind to be free for that time that I'm moving. You visualize that and you feel that. That's how we begin. Have you ever noticed how the more successful somebody gets, the luckier they seem to be? Luck really just comes from the things that we think and the things that we do. Successful people tend to only think about what they know is their inevitable success. And they do that by visualizing. They always have a goal in mind. They can see it, they can feel it, and they move towards that every day. And they find luck because the RAS operates to move them only to things that are in alignment with that goal and that clarity and that certainty that they have. They're focused on their capacity for improvement. They're focused on their resilience. They're focused on their resourcefulness. They believe in their ability to grow through anything. And so they keep finding opportunities that leverage that, that give them that, and it moves them closer towards their goal. If your RAS is fine-tuned to all the ways that you struggle and suffer and all the excuses and justifications and roadblocks, that is exactly what you will find. So friend, two things you need to do for me today. Visualize yourself with more self-worth than you have ever experienced before. Remind yourself why completing a program like this is necessary. Why it's worth starting the journey into deepening your relationship with yourself and becoming a person who can action their intentions and do the things that they say they are going to do. That's exactly what this program provides you, a challenge to learn how to be that person. I'm going to support you every step of the way. The second thing I want you to do is visualize yourself running, getting out there, laughing at, you know, the way that you have to shake off that self-doubt and just keep moving, laughing at the way that good music can just lift your spirit, smiling with the little pride that you know you feel when you're out there doing it, even when it's really hard, there's going to be that part of you that feels proud for just giving it a go. Start visualizing that now before the program starts. Start living into that version of you that is consistent and committed and, you know, just optimistic about what they are capable of. Start doing that. It doesn't take long, guys. It would take you 60 seconds a day, 30 seconds visualizing my higher self with all the self-worth and this is why a challenge like this program is worth it and 30 seconds visualizing who you're going to be within this program. Do those two things. Now, if you're really vibing this, and you're really feeling this, I'm going to take you to the next level right here and right now. What I have created for myself is a sheet of amazingly powerful running mantras. Yeah. 
I have some success mantras for different areas of my life that have been so powerful and they have worked so effectively. And one of the uh, sheets that I have are literally running mantras. Like I said, I've trained for many events over many years and these running mantras have really supported me in just getting my mind right and thinking the thoughts that I needed in order to get my RAS on track in the way I wanted it to be and to feel the way I needed to feel to action my intentions. If you would like a copy of the running mantras that I believe to be so powerful and I have used countless times, I would love to share that with you. And what I'm going to get you to do is just comment below this video and just tell me that you would like to see them and I will send them to you. Alrighty, guys, thank you so much for your time and energy. I cannot wait to share more with you and to unlock more within you and to just hold space for you to really just sit back and reflect and learn and grow and realize that your potential completely untapped. How exciting. Let's see what we can achieve.